You know what we're doing? No. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, money, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing a podcast. podcast. We don't usually start with mail, but this time I think it's important. <laughs> we're going to start with mail. Someone sent us beer. Steve has the letter right there. It came from all the way from Louisiana, and uh, they wrapped it. Like crazy. This is the last layer of wrapping. This was inside of a box, which is encapsulated in all sorts of other materials, which is inside a box like this big, like a box this big to send a six pack. So I appreciate the packing effort. Says, guys, please enjoy three local Louisiana beers, Nola Belgian Pale Ale, Reasonably Corrupt Black Lager, and Juicifer from Gnarly Barley. Juicifer? All three are great, but very different. Stay grounded. Jucifer kind of sounds like a slur. <laughs> I know they're playing on juice. Like juicy. Juicy. Juicy Lucifer. But Jucifer, it's a little bit iffy there, guys. Like I think he, I don't think that one's gonna make it to, you know, national distribution. <laughs> I don't know. There's some things <laughs> in the national distribution. It's inside of a bag as well. It's inside of a bag, inside of cellophane. Like it was I wish I had unboxed this beer. With a camera rolling. All right, I'm going to start with... Uh, I'm going to start with the Reasonably Corrupt. I'm going to start and with... And we are not planning on sessioning this whole thing. We're going to we're gonna do like one... Game. Oh, you're doing the, region, the Reasonably Corrupt? I was going to yeah. do the Reasonably Corrupt. Let's well, just, let's do them both. Let's do them together. We'll, we'll share the experience. All right, we'll put those back in the fridge for next time. Cheers, Steve. Clink. <laughs> I don't know. We're not actually in the same room. It's green screen, so that interaction was was awkward. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it smells delicious. Man, I wish I had a cup now. You you keep the mics hot. I'm gonna go get a cup. I almost spilled it. That is deliciously malty, Ryan. I told you, man, I told you to get a cup. You didn't want to listen. Reasonably corrupt black lager, 30 international bitterness units, 5.5% from Great Raft. Robust and smooth, light body. Don't let the darkness Dude, fool you. Drink no spo no spoilers. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm just reading <laughs> the can. What if that was the thing, like asking people not to spoil like the surprise of tasting food for you? The brighter side of dark. What it says. It's a really cool can. A cool can, he says. Yeah, it was in the fridge all day, Steve. Of course it's going to be cool. I'm liking the smells I'm smelling in the room already. And now I'm putting my nose in there. Do it. This is turning into 60 cycle yum in this episode. Mmm, I like that a lot. I haven't had a good stout. Or stout, it's not a stout. stout. stout it's a black style. lager. It's a black lager. But I haven't had anything nice and dark as far as a beer goes in a while. Well, whose fault is that? You know what? I'm, I'm not going to name names. But that's delicious. Now, I'm not going to blame mm. anyone why I haven't had a dark beer in a while. But, oh my gosh, that's really, really good. Oh. No, that's really, really good. I like that. <laughs> like... <laughs> If that was local, I'd be in trouble because I'd, I'd, that would be my thing for a while. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sending that to us. <laughs> All right, do we want to get into the topic? Yeah, this topic was sent by Nicholas Martinez, who we says... We should make a, a graphic that says top pick. It's the topic, Steve. You're the designer. We ha our logo is a freaking pick, and uh. just occurred to me now, like sixteen hundred videos in, like four hundred and thirty six episodes in of a podcast. Top pick. Top pick. 
you kidding me? Nicholas Martinez says there's a video where Josh Hom had a chance to play George Harrison's Rosewood Telecaster. He played for a moment, and it seemed like his reverence. Are you gonna make it, Steve? You just made gross for the man, sounds with your mouth. Uh, just overtook him after a while, and he said, "Some things you are never supposed to touch." Is there any instrument that belonged to a guitar hero that you would love to play so much? that it may hurt you to play it. I want to rewind to back before you made grow up sounds with your mouth and give you a chance to give that a clean read. <laughs> Cause I think it flew over everyone's head. <laughs> Cause we were all thinking about the gross gurgles in your throat. Steve, there is a video where Josh Hom had a chance to play George Harrison's Rosewood Telecaster. He played for a moment and it seemed like his reverence for the man just took over him after a while. And he said, some things you are never supposed to touch. Is there any instrument that belonged to a guitar hero that you would love to play so much that it may hurt you to play it? Now that's a topic. That's a fun topic. Like I felt this a little bit when the last time I was at Towin, I think, and they had the Dick Dale Strat. Mm -hmm. That's not even Dick Dale's actual Strat. No, it was, you know, a custom shop reproduction sort of thing, obviously because it's a, it was a right-handed guitar. It wasn't a left-handed guitar. Right. But like, as much as I enjoyed picking it up and playing it and getting to look at it and hold it in person, mm -hmm. you're like, oh man, this is supposed to be like to a spec and whatnot. And it has a beautiful finish on it and it was wonderfully made and whatnot. I didn't feel like I need to be playing this guitar or I should be playing this guitar. Like there's something about it that transcended like, it took it out of like the realm of possibility for me right. to be playing it. You know, And I think I would probably feel the wet, the same way if like, someone handed me like link Ray's one of his guitars or something like that. Like there's probably a, a handful of people like you hand me their guitar and I'm going to get like too psyched out to play it. Right. And I'm not someone who gets big into like hero worship or whatever. I'm, I'm famously not really into favorites and hero worship and like, that's not, but like there's certain things it's like, it kind of, it kind of gives you some nerves a little bit. Yeah. And it's not because it's valuable, but it's kind of like the weird connection of it. I feel like the list of like people who would fit that. Like, I don't think I could play Willie Nelson's. Uh, is it Trigger? Oh, yeah. Partially because it's like falling apart, and obviously it's not going to just sh you know disintegrate in my hands. Uh, but it's just like that of... thing where you feel like you you can't touch the thing there's a bit of a like a reverence thing there and there's also a bit of just realizing like oh i don't want this to be the shittiest day of this guitar's life <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's, it, it's had a really good run up into now and and now i'm the one that's gonna play it like i don't think it deserves that <laughs> right <laughs> i'm trying to think if I, I feel like i feel that way about like any current professional guitarist right You're like oh hey yeah you want to play this uh no but the, okay. there's a different level of it when it's like someone that you admire yeah you know um you know what if what if jimmy from the jimmy eat worlds handed you a guitar and was like here you no, go i play his stuff he's knock not, yourself he's not that good <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> is uh, there a jimmy in the band I was just, there's a there's a gym. Ah, interesting. So you thought I was referencing a real person instead of just trying to mock the, the name of the band. No, I thought you were just trying to mock ah, the band. Okay, good. My my joke uh, did what it was trying to do. Steve just doesn't yeah. react to anything. It's kind of like you know who's hootie. Steve, you could be a spy. They could they could be waterboarding you, and you'd and you would just be like, no, I'd spill all the secrets if I was being waterboarded. <laughs> the problem is, is I would be delivering them in this same tone. And so they'd be like, you're lying. I'd be like, no, guys, really, the secret base is here. Please, please stop waterboarding listen, me. Listen, guys, I'll switch to your side. I'll give yeah. you all the secrets. You just have to stop waterboarding me. We don't believe you. You have no emotion and, or tone in your voice. <laughs> no, guys, that's the way I talk. <laughs> um, this, is a, this, got, this is as excited as I get, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't know because I don't think i have that kind of like meant like like i said like 
it's one thing I think for Josh Hom, who is a person where I would be like, if I sat down with Josh Hom, he's like, oh yeah, go ahead and feel free to play any of my guitars. I'd just be like, sure. But you're Josh. No, I'd like, I touch all his stuff, no problem. No, I'm saying like I would do it, but I'd also be like, this is your stuff. Like I feel like would be a really fun session for me. I'd have right. a, I've had a lot of fun. Maybe I need a couple beers to have a lot of fun. Would be like to sit in on like a Foo Fighter session. And sure. just have Dave Grohl be like, yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let me teach you how to play every song on Everlong. Like that would be, that would right. be a fucking blast. I think you, I would see you having an amazing time uh, doing that. But it would take me a while to be like, yeah, I'll play your signature 335, Dave. Sure. Right, right. And, and, but I would get there, but it's like, I think it's another level for someone like Josh Hom to say like, like, I think anyone reasonable would pick anyone at like his level or above. So for him to say like, no, this is a true guitar God scenario, you know, it's, it's a, it's a different thing. Um, yeah. I don't know if I, I can think of anyone that I put in like that high of a class. What is like freaking Johnny Marr hands you his Jaguar. But the thing is, is I suck at guitar. So I don't really want to play in front of anybody. <laughs> Like that's what I'm getting at. Right, right. So it's hard for me. To, it's hard for me to compartmentalize the two different it's scenarios. More, it's, it's more than just your ability as a guitarist. It's like no, I know excitement I, and reverence of the. I I get it. Yeah, I get it. You know, it's like the Rosewood Telecaster. It's you know this is the presumably I'm going to get killed in the comments if I get this wrong, but you know it's that's the while my guitar gently weeps guitar. Don't look at me Maybe, like I know. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I know that's like one of his most famous guitars. Sure. Um, for for and being, and I know it's late, like late sixties Beatles. Right, right. So, I think I said the ones that I would. Yeah, and they, those make sense for but you. Like so, so many, so many like people could hand me their guitar and be like, "Oh, cool! I'll try this." You yeah. know, like yeah. I'm trying to think of like another famous guitar. The more I like think about it, the more it's more it's more of like a personal thing versus like going to a museum because that's the other thing is that George Harrison obviously isn't presenting the guitar to Josh Hom because George Harrison's dead. Like if Chris Ballou handed me his two string bass guitar. I'm like, right. oh, this is a rad experience. I'm going to have a lot of fun right now. But I, I greatly, deeply appreciate the presence. Yeah. yeah. But it's a different, it's a different vibe for some reason. You know. I don't know. I don't know how to. It's one of those undefinable. I, 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 I understand it. I'm saying I don't think I have that kind of connection with like a single artist. You think I'm weak. I don't think you're weak. I think you have a. I think you have a strong. Is that like a Star Wars? Is that a Star Wars joke? No, if it it did feel very Klingon or something yeah. like that. You think if, I'm weak? You think I have no honor? That's you, how Klingons talk. You think I have no honor? That was like a Jar Jar Klingon. <laughs> I was going for like I was going for like Shemp from the Stooges. or Curly. I was going yeah, for yeah, Curly. Yeah. Or you that. You think I have no honor? You read that as Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch Three, St Three Stooges Star Trek now. I want no, that to not. exist. I want them to be fixing. I want them to be in a Jeffrey's tube and like trying to fix things. And they accidentally like, like compromise the warp core or something. I want this to exist. <laughs> I'm so mad I can't think of a guitar. But they're like aliens. This like, is this is really frustrating to me now. But what if he went like super historical? Like what if like Les Paul hands you the log and, and asks you to, to to strum something? I think it would have to be like that level of guitar. I think it would have to be like you know, uh, something with that's a historical object, like a Hendrix, the Hendrix Strat, or, um, uh, you know, as you know, like you, you're not, you don't, you don't have anything that would give you like goosebumps because you knew, know that you're holding the thing that, that made all the music that was so important to you throughout your life. Like you wouldn't get like goosebumps. You wouldn't I'm get sure that's, like, that's, that's, that's the thing is that I, I won. I wanted to do this topic because I think it's a really good topic. Yeah. I'm really frustrated right now. I can't. And I can see you struggling with anything. it because you're not like, 
And it's because you're I, a little bit of a robot. Steve. I think a lot of the artists that I listen to, they don't have that like quality of that mystique. Yeah. That mystique. I think it would have to be like, uh, probably like, uh, the Johnny Greenwood telecaster. Okay. Like I'm not the, I'm not a huge Radiohead fan, but I think that would be one of those. Or it would like, be like a moment like, Whoa, like a da- I'm holding this right yeah, now. David Gilmore Strat where it, like, it'd be like, Hey, here you go. And part of me would be like, this is a, like a $10 million Stratocaster. And part of me would be really like, no, I, I have nothing to contribute to this guitar. Like right. everything that this guitar has to contribute to society has been contributed and I can give you nothing. So please. Right. Totally. Like, I think that, I think that is the experience that I, that, yeah, no, that I, had with I, the dictator. I, I get Strat. it. It's like, there's nothing I can do with this that would, you know, like I can't play this so different from Dick Dale that it becomes my own thing. Right. No, I, I under, I understand the emotion. I just don't know. I just don't know what can, what I would connect to that. It's a complex like response. I'm not sure how to pin that unique feeling down. What do you, what do you guys think out in comment land? Yeah. We let's hear, let's hear from you guys. Cause yeah. obviously we ran out of stuff to say, anything. we want to know what you had to say so that you can pat out our analytics by filling up the comment section. So just get down there and get to work. Just get to work kids. You know, back to the mind, <laughs> back to, back to the analytics minds, please. Single file. Ugh. You'll have a break in eight hours. You know, we didn't talk about it last week. Uh-huh. Uh, if you want to support this garbage, head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle right, cast or for as little as a dollar uh, a month, you can support the show and at, at the $5 level, we'll send you a little swag at the $10 level. We got a bunch of NAM stuff here. We can and, s- and gear maybe fest some stuff. NAM stuff and gear fest stuff, stickers from brands, stuff from Ernie ball. They gave us a bunch of stuff. Eventually someone will receive that back. Just we got saying. a bunch of guitar straps over here. Yeah, Pro- I'm gonna rocket s- straps. Probably for the next, you know, several new signups on the inner circle, we'll be sending one of these. Well, I out. think I don't know how you keep track of things. I don't know when the last time you st- sent stuff out, but I have a feeling it'll be random order when you actually like put the other boxes. So don't expect like if you signed up this week, don't expect like you're definitely gonna get a strap. I think there's enough straps in there right now that. Uh, we could take at least five new inner circle people. If you want to keep, they if you want to keep track of it, see, I'm just letting you know, if you get people's hopes up thinking that they join, like you'll get today, s- you'll get something, but they they might not get the straps. It's, well. I mean, potentially before this episode air, we could get five new signups and I, and you know, in the future, I, but I'm just saying, who knows when you're going to ship again, you might lose track. No, I, I have a way of keeping track of that. He has a way of keeping track of yeah. that sort of thing. Don't worry, guys. Steve has his ways. You know what? You know what's a guitar that could probably fit in that? What? And again, it's the it's the wrong hand. Uh, so that's that's already a detriment. Um, Kurt Cobain has a lot of famous guitars, mm. but I think I would feel like the Jagsting prototype is a little cursed because it was never completed. Interesting. And so I don't, I don't think, uh, you think it's the guitar that was the problem. That yeah. was the curse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, you know what I mean? It's like the guitar that was in a prototype phase when he died. And so, and, and they, you know, I, sure. the, the estate decided to push the release anyway. You think it feels a little spooky. It feels a little spooky. It's like, Oh, cause I, you know, everyone who knows the Jack Stein story knows I mean, that, if- it, that it's an incomplete, Guitar. If you're going to get haunted by a rock and roll ghost, though. Steve, top five rock and roll ghosts you want to be haunted by. I mean, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, anytime, you know, you wake up, middle of the night, you're stumbling in the bathroom. Uh, something, you know, you're, you can't find the door handle. Maybe you put a box out and you forgot it was there. And you're just getting frustrated you can't see where you're going and then all of a sudden you hear something in the way <laughs> thanks kurt something in the way did they slow that song down for batman i don't think so 
I think that's. I don't remember it being that. Slow. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen Batman. I have heard that song. Oh, I spoiled it for you. Now you know that, that song is Batman. And it feels slow. That song. We should have talked about that song last week. That's a song that took got a big bump from that's pop culture. True. It got that Batman bump. Batman bump. You know what other song got a got a good bump? Oh, but it was the cover of uh, whatever it's the song that was. On. <laughs> Are you gonna use words? The and what's the song? Oh, the smells like Teen Spirit at the beginning of uh, Black Widow. It's like super. Oh, right. It's a super slowed down cover, and it's right, right. extremely polarizing. I don't. I remember it being not memorable because I clearly don't remember it very well. That's. I think that's the best thing about it. My daughter, my twelve year old, loves that version, and she thinks Kurt's version sucks. Interesting. So interesting. There you go. Twelve year olds. Twelve year olds. What can you do? Yeah. You know. I mean, every. You know, it, Nirvana songs are great to cover. Like yeah, cla- one of the classic songs to cover. Yep. Is any Nirvana song? All right. This ad was sent by Kyle J. Who's Kyle J? I don't know. Uh, this is, uh, he was, must be in the group. It must be where you got this. 1972 Fender Telecaster Bass, 100% original. I actually think this was emailed. $2,400. Oh, hmm, I didn't see it. 1972 Fender Telecaster Bass, all original. Frets are in good shape. Currently set up with D'Addario light gauge strings with very low action. The bass has been intonated and ready to play. Incredible, incredible sustain up and down the neck at every position. And there are no, quote, dead spots. There's some discoloration on the neck, which looks worse in the photos than it is. And there's some wear through the lacquer on the bottom side of the neck. There's, is there anything in particular here I need to read? It sounds like it's in really good shape. Now here's my question, Steve. Yeah. I think this looks rad. It does look rad. 1972. Mm -hmm. And it's only $2,400. What am I missing? I don't know. Cause like, if this was a strat, and, oh, it'd be worth way more. And it looked this good. Yeah. And it was from 1972 and 100% original. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like it, you know, like 72 is not 68. I mean, come on, right? Guys, you know what I'm talking about? But it's still like, it would be worth a lot of I money. I mean, it doesn't have the original strings. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you know, Ryan. I would. I think I would pay twenty four hundred for this guitar if it had the original strings. I know it's best. Best you can get right now is twenty three hundred dollars and so twenty twenty three hundred seventy five. You know, you've got to knock twenty five dollars off there for the strings. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm assuming the thumb rest is not original, but who cares, right? I think the thumb rest is original. Are the thumb rest is original on the? I always assumed thumb rest were something you put on aftermarket. Uh, some of the models back then would have them. I'm pretty sure. That's very interesting. I think it's just like there are guitars that I could get new today. No, this is a good deal. This is a good deal. This Here, has got to be a screaming good here's deal. Here's one. Right? Here's one in like butterscotch. Same year, 1972 on reverb. Oh, this isn't butterscotch. This is natural. It's that 70s natural that looks butterscotch but it's not for forty five hundred dollars right and even that feels kind of low and this one does come with the The cover uh, the bridge cover it's just not installed right i think this is a freaking good deal where is this (laughs) this this, it's in kalispell where's kalispell check the email man i don't know i was grab the the ad was active kalispell Callus Bell is in Montana. All right, I'm gonna get a plane ticket. <laughs> Twenty six hundred bucks, man. There's a lot of ways you could spend that money without even like breaking into the eighties. You know, here's another uh, Fender Telecaster bass, 1972. This one's also in natural uh, for four thousand dollars. I kind of like that this one is aged white. Here's a blue one, Lake Placid blue no, for, like, for for $7,000. No, this white one looks the best. Here's one for 24. Is that copper? Uh no, this is natural. Oh, screw it. If it was copper, I'd be in love. No, this the is white. This, this is the same price. Uh but it doesn't look like it comes with the bridge. And it looks a little cover. bit more roughed up. 
So maybe here's, a, here's an Olympic white. So this is going to be, I think, the same color. That's definitely well played. Right. This is done a few tours uh, with the Talking Heads. Uh, this really? is a seventy. I'm just saying it's pretty oh, okay. beat up. All right. Uh, forty five hundred dollars. There's a lot of these for forty five hundred dollars. It seems thirty six hundred. Yeah, four thousand. But even look at like nineteen seventy two Strat. Oh, it, it's uh, sure like there Olympic Olympic white nineteen seventy two Strat Strato Castor. I want to know what those go for. Uh, f- ten grand for a thun for a uh, three tone. Here's an Olympic white. Somebody wants $10,317. Why is it that the base is worth so much less? Uh, 9700 Is it just because it's, those are guitars? No, some of the naturals are like four, down in the 4000s. But still, you didn't see anything approaching ten grand. No. With the base. But that's stra- like Stratocaster is, that's. But there has only- to be more of them. <laughs> yeah, but there's more, also more like collectors. There's more. Yeah, co- yeah. Like, look, I'm I'm a competent. I will say I think, uh, despite what I do in the Meteora video, I'm a competent bass player. I wonder if I've published that by now. Um, no, you totally are. It's like, Steve, like, like I can, Steve, I, you get Steve in a band scenario and he grooves and he, and he I, make, I can, and he brings something. to I the can band. find my spot. Yeah, in, in, comfortably. Uh, in like a standard like four piece, three piece, four piece, five piece scenario right. on bass. Six piece is right out. He skips right over to seven piece. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't get me started on eight pieces. Um, but if you're giving Steve eight pieces, they better be chicken. Okay, I'm talking two breasts, two thighs, oh two wings, two legs, and I think, a, like basically from that. Um, you think about, okay, again, with like a four piece, what's in a four piece drums, maybe a couple strips and a thigh <laughs> drums. You'll get a, a biscuit drums, you know? guitar, bass, a vocalist who probably also plays guitar in a five piece. You're definitely expecting two guitars. If you've got right okay, in if, an eight piece, maybe you have four guitars, but you still only have one bass. If player. you've got an eight piece and you don't have a horn section, what are you even doing? But my point, my point being, like the uh there's just a lot like there's not as many bass players baby there's not as many bass players as there are guitar players you have all these bands with like two three four you you get here here's here's what you'll understand this i'll understand this finally some some of these something i'll finally understand our our gear talk i've been waiting to understand something our gear talk praise and worship contingent will understand this when you pull up a hillsong video like a Hillsong live video from like 2008. How many guitar players do they have? Like freaking 10. Right. How, how many bass players do they have? One. Maybe like, if, you know, if you count the keyboard players left hand, then they've got two. Mm. And they've got 10 guitar players. What if the drummer has one of those little like, like electric uh, side kits? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Oh. But you know what I mean? Like bass players are... Drummers are of the highest demand in any music scene than bass players. And guitar guitarists are everywhere. No, I feel like guitarists are in the lowest demand to the point where they have to start their own bands to do anything. That's what I'm saying. But bass, They're in the lowest demand. Bassists are in reasonable demand. Yeah, and drummers are in the highest demand. But there's, there's less... It feels like there's less good bassists. There's just less bassists in general. Would you rather in a band have a really good bassist... And a really bad drummer or a really bad drummer and a really good bassist. Did I say the th- same thing twice? Yes, you did. Would you rather have a really good bassist and a terrible drummer or a really good drummer and a terrible bassist? I love that the camera is trying to focus on your shirt. <laughs> they can't see that at home. There's little blue lines all over everything that it tries to Well, there's to focus the little on. like focus. Grid. Oh, that's because I focus to the chair, bud. Oh. Yeah. Bud. <laughs> I've never done that before. Yeah, have you watched Shorzy? I watched one episode and then I realized he's my least favorite character. Oh, I back. yeah. 
It's the most heart- I super don't I super very, duper don't care about the stock the hockey storylines. It's very heart heartwarming story. I don't care about hockey. Um what are we talking Unless about? Unless it's tonsil hockey. You know oh, what I mean? uh, good bass player, bad it's drummer. A joke about kissing. Or bad bass player, good drummer. Right. Uh, you you got to have a good drummer, man. You can always fake a bad bass player. I, I think it depends on how bad the drummer is. Like, I can deal with, like, I feel like a good bassist can fix a bad drummer. <laughs> but I don't think a good drummer can fix a bad bassist. I think a bad drummer can break any i can think a bad drummer will break a good basis what do you, when you think of a bad basis what do you think of a guitar player on bass <laughs> honestly <laughs> no but honestly that's what i here's what i'm about to describe as a bad basis someone who overplays and outside the groove yeah no, that's, that's a guitar that's, player playing bass that's a guitar player playing bass that's what it is it's the same thing i would rather have a drummer that keeps it simple and is kind of workably near the groove mm-hmm. than a bassist that isn't on the groove at all. Like a, that's fair. A, I think a good bassist could follow the bad groove of a bad drummer and make I it. Was, I would, and make and give it that give it that like push. You by know? bad by bad drummer, I'm thinking like a drummer that either can't keep time or can't. Let's not say or like overfills. Let's not even put bad time on it. Excuse me. Let's pay, say playing correctly for the part. Like, so playing tastefully mm. and grooving like a drummer that's on time, but doesn't groove a good basis will fix that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, a good basis will bring the groove in. Even if the drummer is playing st- like sterile straight. Yeah. I, I I agree with that. As long as as long as the guitar can swing a little, then the bass player will fill in the gaps that the drums aren't. Oh, who cares what the guitar is doing? It's called no, no, it's no, called the, lead guitar. We're not leading anyone the guitar, anywhere. The, the, the guitar's got to be able to at least feel the swing that the bass player sure. is going to fit in there. Sure, or feel whatever the groove that the bass player is going to create. But yeah, if all the drummer is doing is a is like a straight like, I I almost want my drummer can work with that i almost want my drummer to cut loose a little bit here and there and not be completely on it sure but the the bassist like you want that machine you know Mm -hmm. but you like still has that swagger like the bass is such a skeletal part of a band but still has the swagger i I followed this it's very important i followed this instagram uh account a while ago but i don't know man i don't know what it's called is the problem that's always a problem. I feel like when you discover a YouTube channel that you like, then it's like, oh, I just know that channel's name now. But like you, I think it's because of the the length of the content. You know, you get to know the person in the video fairly quickly. But like, I'll see TikToks and Instagrams from the same person mm-hmm. like dozens of times, and and I still can't tell you the name of their account. So this is Maurice Argiro. Uh, he does all these little Those comics really cool. that are like bass, but it's like bass moves. That's all you you're should like. tag me in these. Or we probably follow it with our account, with our joint account. I don't know. I follow this with my personal account. Oh, uh, well, tag me in one of those. Those all are right. brilliant. All right. Because there's like the sting. I'll find one. To, I'll find a good one to tag you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bass moves. It's bass stances. But yeah. that's like, that's the joke. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a couple of them that are animated. Right, right. Oh, yeah, they're cool. all the different positions. I want to see these. Um, Those are really anyway, cool. Anyway, man, twenty four hundred dollars, dude. Like, if this was a guitar, I'd be like running out to get it. It's crazy that you can get stuff this old and this cool. This is fifty years old, man. I kind of feel like if I didn't just like be in the situation that I'm in. You just bought a house. You can't buy a base. I I would be really tempted to message them and be like, hey, man, how much to ship this? Figure out how much you can sell all your other stuff for. No, I mean, I I could, I could, uh, I could get the money to do this. I could see. It's not a matter of that. I could see you playing this. It's not a matter of getting the money. It's a matter of, do I need a third base? No, I'm telling you, sell the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Start over with a vintage uh, a Telecaster base. Like I could get, ha- I could sell both my bases and get halfway there, at least halfway there. Whoa! 
living on a prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started to lose confidence as I got halfway through <sighs> singing that. All right, this episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. That's right, Steve. They make such pedals as the Stevenson Burkhead, which was a limited edition run. I don't know if it's coming back. It's probably never coming back. No, I don't think there will ever be any more of these, which is why it is so important to follow our friends, Bigger Pedals, Mm -hmm. on all their social medias and get on their mailing lists and things like that to make sure you stay up to date to when they have cool limited edition stuff like the Stevenson Burkhead here. This was, uh, there was a couple of them that were a kit. Steve and I each built our own. I built mine out at Grant's house, Grant and Karen's yeah. house in Nashville when they lived out there. And then we sold like 10 of them. And that's all there's ever going to be, baby. That's it. So you want to stay up on Big Ear and everything they do, social medias and email us, yeah. like I said. Get on those lists. Uh, they're in the process of relocating their shop. So there's some downtime right now, but I'm sure that they will be back mm-hmm. in, in full swing in the next couple months. Yep. And then moving on, another, uh, do we want to do? Let's do some mail. Let's do some mail. We got another shirt down here, I'm suspecting. This is from, well, I don't think it's going to say the person's name. Yes. uh, It doesn't say the person's name that sent it. So hopefully there will be a note inside. I need the knife. I think I need the knife. Watch me cut myself because I don't know how to approach this bag. Oh, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> Good thing you're opening a shirt. All right, Steve, why don't you do the honors and reveal this shirt to the world? We'll find out if one of us is changing shirts this episode. Let's see what's next. This shirt says the Surf Junkies. Oh, yeah, the Surf Junkies. They told me they were going to send this out. Thank you. I'm going to wear this when I record a video playing guitar sometime. So thank you, the Surf Junkies. Uh, You want to do the honors on this one? Sure thing. Listen to all that crunchy. Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Is this also a shirt? Maybe. This is in a duck bag. Oh, this is also a shirt. Let's read the note. Let's read the note. This is from Zach Robertson. Dear Mr. Crap, dear Mr. Crap's loser gear that hums and Steve. I mean, clothes shirts that will make people both think you both say yay sports when worn. The front design was originally intended to be in support of a stage rally car. Uh, that my friend and I had to abandon due to a lack of funds. Once COVID hit, we started making less money on commission in the service departments of the dealerships we worked at. We're both also musicians, so I ended up changing it to the name of my reverb store where I sell my crap gear for losers. I really started watching your channel and ended up a devoted fan of the podcast over the past two years. My daughter and I both won Acer reverbs when you're giving those away. Thanks for the laughs and gear reviews and obviously the pedals. P.S. When does Steve get to host a gear review video? Let's check these shirts. I don't know. That's a great question. But uh, let's check these shirts well, out. Well, you're going to be in the Meteora video. I will be in the Meteora. Oh, here's some stickers. There we go. $13.91. That's the brand. Perfect for, like, wrapping the edge of the cyclone here again for people who don't know when we completely oh cover my gosh this cyclone with Look stickers we're going to give it away burkhead <laughs> 1391 show them the back show them the back there you go that's funny and this one is oh my gosh that's, funny that we picked that that's great that uh that pedal the feature this episode we had no idea We'll have to put that in our shirt tote for a future yeah, recording so session. Yeah, we're, so we're trying to cover the cyclone with stickers so that we can give it away. And also, if you send us a shirt to our UPS box, uh, as long as it fits and it isn't horrifically offensive to people that we care about, uh, then we will wear the shirt. If on it's the offensive show. to people we don't care about, we'll wear it. <laughs> Who are people we don't care about, Steve? I don't know. 
It's like pornography. I'll know it when I see it. That's what the Supreme Court said. I know that's what they said. I, I think it's interesting that you're saying it right now. <laughs> right, you <laughs> swiped me out of what I was oh. doing on the iPad. Uh, we're getting close to getting this thing all covered up, and then we're going to have to figure out how to give it away. Like, there's a big spot right there. There's some big spots right here. The clear, the clear sticker kind of screwed us. Some right there. Decent sized spot right there. The sticker's coming off already. But we're getting close. Some little, little spots. I feel like we might be a month or two away still. I, th I think there's some stickers in that box. In this box right here? No, the box that you pulled it out of. Maybe. I didn't see any. Oh, maybe there are in here. So we got a we got a pedal from Electronics. Yeah, he says, Dear Ryan and Steve, please find some stickers to add to the giveaway swag pile. This is in response to your... Uh, Instagram post. I think he for, did. He forget. To I think he forgot stickers. the stickers. That's okay. Uh, I think we. I have Didn't some of get... the stickers before in there. Yeah, I think we have stickers from before. So maybe this is just the pedal. Uh, he says, "I'd love this for you to cool. check out the pedal. Let me know what you think." Not sure I can afford your rates for demo yet, but maybe one day. So he's one of the ones who just kept starting. I've talked to you about this pedal. I've got this pedal, and I've got the uh, the tone plug pedal that came in. Yeah. I, I should put these aside and do like a user. Put it back in the bag, man. Okay. Okay. Now I feel like a like a gosh, uh, like a simpleton over here. But yeah, this is from Electronics. It's a really clean. This is like a raised. I really like that. Like sticker on here. It's really cool. I like that look. I'm going to plug that in and try it. And for sure. I think I think he posted some uh, like a little phone video he made of the pedal and it on uh, on the Discord and it sounds really cool. If it's someone I'm thinking of. I think I think it's really up your alley. Well, I think you'll like it. I'm going to check it out. I'll probably make a video of it. Cool. I'll put it over here for now. Anything else? Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. There's I the stickers. I found them. Woo. All right, I'll put, pull one out and put it on the cyclone. I think there's already one on there. Ah, we'll do another one. It's right there above the speed demon. Steve is watching in case I cut myself. I'm waiting for that knife to fly out of your hand and stab me in the head. Whoa. Those are like... These are stickers. Yeah. Okay, I'll put this... On, we'll put one of these on the guitar. All right, it's I'll, like a raised sticker. Yeah, it's like a little... Like thick uh, plastic. On plastic. ASMR. Where should that go? There we go. Right above the pit guard, right by the raccoon. Okay, what next, Steve? Another Let's ad? Let's do another ad. You want to do this Bullet Deluxe? I do, Steve. This has been on our local Craigslist for a while. And you and I discussed it? Discussed? We discussed it. Why does that word sound wrong? Disgust. Rare Fender Bullet Deluxe We talked about it. Made in Fullerton, California. These were made only one year in 1981. Not many 41-year-old Deluxe models out there. Most you see for sale are the standard with pit guard bridge. Deluxe have strength through body, hardtail bridge. The best tone and stays in tune. This is in excellent condition. Clues on tuners, pickups sound hot. Electronics were, oh, well, you're saying the pickups were stolen. Neck is awesome. Da, 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 da. USA bullets are only made for three years. Most people don't know about this gem of a Fender guitar. If the bullets the 80, were only made for three years, then how do you reload this? The 81 bullet was the only year <laughs> uh, made with Rosewood fretboard. 82 and 83 only came in maple. If interested, please call. They're asking 1575 for this. I feel like this guy keeps changing the price too because he had it set this high a while back and then he took it down to like 14. Now it's back up. This is in really good shape for its age. It is. But I'm it's missing the original pickups. Is it? Is that what it said? No, I think it's just, I think those, no, those are definitely the original. Oh, okay, pickups. all right. I thought you said something about the pickups being think, stolen. No, it says there, he says the pickups sound hot. Oh, I see you were making a joke, <sighs> Steve. Steve, human humor. You're learning. <laughs> I don't know how much these go for <laughs> these days. Uh, Fender Bullet. I, this is Lux. high. This has got to be high. I'm not saying. Uh, let's see. Fender Bullet Deluxe with Maple Fretboard, 1250. Bullet Base for 1400. A lot of Bullet Bases. 1300. 1300. Here's a Fender Bullet 82 in red for 1100. Yeah. And see, here's my thing. 
I would love to own one of these bullets, but I want the one with the funky metal pit guard. Right. That the the bridge is a piece of the pit guard bent up because it's a thick piece mm-hmm, of metal. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm gonna get a bullet, I want one of the funky ones. Like, I get that you could make the argument that this is the better version because it has the proper hardtail with saddles sort of thing versus the Telecaster three saddle thing that was mounted to a bent piece of metal pick card that often has like, like scratches and dents that have rust bubbling up underneath the paint over the metal and stuff like that. But that's the charm that I want if I'm going to get a bullet. Yeah. And this just, it doesn't have, it's missing that crucial component to make me interested. Like if this was local and it was exactly that, I might be like, I wouldn't be pulling the trigger, but I'd be looking around like, hmm, I wonder if you would accept trades for this or that and that together as a it's package. It's so wild to look at Reverb and see these listed for eight eight hundred to a thousand dollars. If I had known that these were going to pick up value, I probably would have bought three of them because I, I used to see them around for like four fifty. I bought one of these, or did I trade for one uh, for like two hundred, two fifty, something like that? Yeah, and I sold it. For I think four ten. I should have bought it from eBay. you. I should have and bought it from you because it had the pick guard. The pick guard was ru- a little rusty. That was the thing with those pick guards is oh, if yeah. you got a chip in them, they would start to rust. Yeah, it would bubble up like a, here. like a cheap shed. Yeah, uh, that thing. But that thing played freaking great. That one that I played at Carter's at when I was out for summer Nam, mm-hmm. and uh, Marty Schwartz came in and played it. Yeah, it was. A fantastic guitar. Yeah. They're a small body. Uh, the neck is on That's the small like. side, but it is it is a full-scale neck. It's just a small full-scale neck. I like the small feel of those guitars. I wish that Fender would, like, paranormal these things. Right. Like, that should be the next thing, Fender, if you're listening. Mm. Paranormal, these bullets. And, like, I know they, they wouldn't do the pit guard, but consider it. No, they're not going to do the pick guard. They're going to do like, what if they did? No, they're going to do the same hardtail strat bridge that is on the the leads on the on the or on the lead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At very best, they might do the duo sonic style hardtail bridge mm. with the. Three I was going to say, what if they did this tele the tele body deluxe or the tele body style yeah. bullet, which isn't a tele. It's a tele style. It's not a tele right. body. It's, it's, yeah. Um, it's a melted telecaster and they threw like a Jag trim on it. Oh, it has a space word and it would look so sharp. That's what makes it. Well, I mean, just bringing it back in general makes it paranormal. Cause it's a definitely, right. a, it's definitely a dead, bo- a dead guitar. <laughs> no, totally dead. Like I, honestly think they should put something out just to protect their copyright. Cause if I started a guitar brand right now mm-hmm. that was going to like scalp previous like designs that had fallen out of use or something like that, like this would be on my list. Yeah. I would make a thin, small bodied bullet style, single cut thing. And the double cuts from this series were really cool. So too. what I'm hearing is you're starting your own guitar company. I'm going to start my own guitar company where we just to do make, just to copies of old guitars. Yeah. I've thought about, I've thought, I've, I've, I, if I could get connected with like an OEM, like a Chinese OEM that mm-hmm. was, that made product that I was like, okay, you can hit, hit quality that I'd be comfortable with. Right. I've thought about like investing like 10, 20 grand into like trying to get Dang. something started. If I knew that I, if I knew that I could do runs that made sense and make a profit selling them. Mm-hmm and get lined up with the right people, I might do that sort of thing. I think that's the trick is getting lined up with the right people. Yeah. And how do you get enough, you know, get samples or get enough? Like, I'd want to know like, Hey, what, what other brands are you building out? You know, I'll go buy three of those to make sure that Mm -hmm. you guys are on the Mm -hmm. level sort of thing, you know, but even like, imagine if I could design and curate kind of like my own Afforda guitars. But right. like they would be more expensive than that because I wouldn't be doing runs of thousands or whatever. It would be like runs of fifteen thirty. Yeah. But what if I could like curate like a collection of like four or five guitar designs that I can order like fifteen or twenty at a time? Like come up with the shapes, the finishes, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Load out. Keep the price down. Things I absolutely do not have time for. 
Wait, you don't? No, I don't have time to make a picture of a popsicle for a pedal that everyone wants to buy. <laughs> yeah, you should do that. <laughs> I'm going to subcontract that. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, I. I don't know if this is a good price for this. It seems high to me. It but seems like a, on the high side, but I wonder if they he'd like take an offer. I think I'm getting she, I'm getting a they, take an offer vibe because he's changed the price like three times now, yeah. and it's been up for like probably two months. So yeah, I I think he'd probably take an offer. I think he, if I offered twelve hundred, he'd come back with thirteen. Mm. So you should offer eleven hundred and get him down to twelve oh. fifty. Oh, smart move, Stephen. Oh, you oh. are the dastardly one, oh aren't gosh. you? Hey, Ryan, this episode's brought to you by <laughs> Chase Bliss Audio. That's right, Steve. They made the tonal recall, but now they don't. They make the Therme, they make the Habit, they make some other yeah. delay. They make type lots machines. of pedals that will make your sound go, oh, 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 oh. But they chop them up in all sorts of different ways. So get them while they're hot, yep. get them before they're gone, before they become a highly valuable collectible. Like this tonal recall, which is the pedal I used in my very, very important demo that probably only a thousand people watched when I published it. <laughs> Head on over to chaselessaudio.com, check out what they have, get on those mailing lists. And if you buy something, I don't know, you could say that we sent you or don't, whatever. You yeah. can do what you want. You realize that either of us could just completely stop the other person from doing something for a while. Just by at the end of their sentence slipping in and stay grounded. And we would both <laughs> just like, stop. like if anyone at our party that we go to wants to shut us up, they could just say that. And we would both like, hmm. and we would, st <laughs> we would stop for a while. <laughs> oh man. This last ad was posted to the group. It's called guitar for babies. Stephen Herbert sent this. Uh, okay. Lol, okay, this is pretty much a guitar for babies. It's short scale and only has two pickups and no whammy bar and is really light. So if you're still reading, we've established that you're a weak baby that wants this guitar to make sensitive feelings music and not real music like Steve Ray Vaughn or Joe Bonamassa. And if you're still reading, you should pretty much just buy this and it's an older Squire dual sonic classic vibe and it kills for real, for real, 385 or trades. Steve, is this our third Fender out of this episode? Yes. We're on a Fender bender, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Steve is writing that down because he knows that's going to be the no, title of the episode. I'm, oh, yeah. Fender bender, baby. Fender. How do you spell bender? Uh, B-E-N-D-E-R. Yeah. B. Baby is spelled B-H-A-B. <laughs> Behaby. H I E. I spelled no, these, baby wrong. These are cool guitars. Idiot. This is a fun ad. It's silly. I think the price three eighty five is fair. Is yeah. my gut instinct? Weren't these like four hundred? Or yeah, are, I think, are, well, my thinking of the Fender ones. Are I 400. think these were two ninety nine new, but they would be four hundred and up now. Yeah, and I don't think. Well, he says that there's. Uh, I really thought about buying one of these when they came out. Um, it's an older one. I don't know if there's a newer one, but this is one of the ones I think has a 24 inch scale. Yeah. It's a 20. I think these were 24 inch scale. So it has the gold anodized pick guard. It's Jaguar scale. It's not the, the ridiculous 22 and a quarter scale. You that, mean the awesome 22 and a yeah. quarter scale? Well, ridiculously awesome. Uh, tiny, tiny, tiny toothpick 20, scale. 22.7, of, of my 90s Duosonic yeah. reissue that I have. But these are really cool guitars. They have that gold anodized pit guard. They're like in desert sand. They're classy looking. And one time I saw someone do a mod to one of these. Mm -hmm. Like I saw them at a show. Like at a show we ran at the... At, at the venue that we, we 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 had, they put a Bigsby behind that bridge, and the only thing they had to do to modify it to make that work is they had to shin the neck a little bit to get the action higher on the bridge saddles, and then they had to grind a couple little string guides mm -hmm. through the back of the bridge plate, and they had a Bigsby on there, and it worked great. They this, were they were abusing it the entire show, and it sounded awesome. This is listed in the Toronto Music Gear Exchange, which means that three eighty five is actually three hundred. Well, damn. So this is a Get your ass up Toronto. Deal. Did we cover three? We covered three. Did you say get your ass up Toronto? Up to Toronto. No, you said get your ass up Get your up ass up to Toronto. Get your ass up Toronto. 
Oh, is, is that what the, you said? That's the thing that you're fixated on? Toronto? Yeah. All right. I'm going Toronto. <laughs> Toronto sounds like a really terrible, like, fake car model. Where are you going on vacation? Oh, I'm going Toronto. Introducing the Dodge Toronto. When you want to go to Toronto, get there in the in the la- luxurious Chrysler Toronto, complete with airbags and shit. just say Toronto no to boring vacations. Toronto Tourism Board invites you to visit beautiful and exciting Toronto. place that everyone knows things about. Toronto. All right, this song was Go sent. Go to Toronto. This song was sent by Luis Feliu. He says, hi, Ryan and Steve. Hi, Luis. My name is Luis, and I have been a fan of the show for a couple years now. Thank you for all the content and the weekly entertainment. Anyway, this song is from my band Noches de Baul, and it's called Despegando, parentheses, taking off. It's about the struggle of a man or woman and everything at once and detailing with it. It's recorded at home with a Scarlet Interface Garage Band, a cheap electronic drum kit, a katana, a Stratocaster. And the bass was played by a friend who also mixed and mastered Gracias y Buen Dia.
Okay, <laughs> where did that solo come from? The guitar. No, like, I thought I had that song figured out. Mm -hmm. That song was like, you're standing outside the, you know, the bar. There's punk bands playing inside, and you hear a song, like, you're hanging out with people because you needed a breather or whatever. You hear that song come in, and it pulls you back, and you're like, uh, you know what, i got to go back inside. This sounds like it's getting pretty good. Like, it's turning into, like, this is, sounds like a, like a good, like, punk rock show. Mm -hmm. I need to get in there right now. Mm -hmm. And then the solo hits, and it turns into, like, 80s ballads, hair metal so solo? So you're saying you felt tricked. Both things paid off. Like, they were both good. But it surprised me that all of a sudden we're dropping from one style of song into, like, I'm getting images of like Bon Jovi in my head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't think that's what Bon Jovi sounds like, but like, but like that, that 80s vibe. era of like, we are going to metal ballad and there's going to be you stadium. Could, you delay. could imagine these guys walking those streets with their six strings. on. There's their just screaming like high gain marshals with a single humbucker Kramer mm -hmm. and some guys just wah, 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 and like, and landing on like these really like uplifting sounding notes at the end right. of into phrases right. and things like that. Like those were like two very different, but good experiences slammed together. Like, and I'm for it. I'm you all like for the song. it. I liked it a lot. Stay grounded. Bye everybody.